the lady up the lane uh, was having a clear out and she put a message on the Facebook page that uh, she was getting rid of some of these blue barrels so I went and got them so the two half barrels and four full size they are not the full mega size barrels and they've got holes in them so uh, they'll be fine for growing things in the thing is now we've got to find a place for them <laughs> whilst I'm clearing everything else out but anyway just out of interest the allotment shop sells these five for ten pounds so that's ten pounds worth but uh, it's not the money it's that uh, I'd rather them be used than end up going to the tip right the weather's not been cooperating and uh, I've got uh, to clear this bed because I want to plant these fruit bushes in it they've started budding out so I need to get them in so I need to clear this stop I came in to move the rhubarb to the other allotment but the conditions suited the bonfire so I decided to leave moving the rhubarb and burn the dead wood to allow me to plant the fruit bushes I used the area on top of the stump and fern that I had already cleared to make sure the roots were killed off by the heat of the fire I managed to burn a lot of branches and brambles right with a huge pile of brambles and uh, branches have gone from this bed and I've more or less cleared that bed now there's a bit left but my neighbour Tony's using that in his uh, stove so that stuff's gone and this bed I've left for him as well so all the stuff in here he'll use in his uh, stove but all that stuff is gone now I can see things that I couldn't see before <laughs> like this uh, bits of metals and things fence there a bit of fencing uh, bits of metal and things all this stuff was just was hidden away so uh, i'll sort this out another day that's not a problem the two fruit beds oh well it's going to be one basically one fruit cage with two beds in it are almost ready to go which is uh, handy because really these plants should be in the ground now but uh, they uh, started to bud out this one has this one is still dormant So uh, gotta get these moved and planted. But all this area was full of rubbish and branches and things. So now that it's all done, I've got space. I can get on with it. Right, I'm gonna douse this fire. So that I can use the charcoal. <coughs> Okay, that's out. It's going to rain the next couple of days, but then I'll come and collect the charcoal and use that for making biochar. Well, the greenhouse growing season has started because uh, I brought uh, the leeks in today and they can happily sit here now till uh, it's time to uh, plant them out. And how do I know it's ready to start growing? Look at this. This is all the compost I sifted out of those pots about three or four weeks ago and it's all started to come out and it's even <laughs> going through the sieve. It is going to take a minute to take out but uh, yeah obviously there's enough light and heat now for things to start sprouting and uh, growing. Even the pots have started. So uh, yeah growing season starts and the weeds have already got off to a flying start. Lovely. Digging that rhubarb has left a crater in this bed so I'll have to sort that out but uh, I need to sort out all this rubbish that was left from under all the brambles and stuff that was here so there's a lot of rubbish still here <coughs> bits of, great big bits of metal and bits of things and metal posts and bricks and loads of carpet and all sorts <laughs> so uh, it's going to be a bit of a clean up job on this bed this bed is the one where I put in the raspberries last year. I deliberately didn't prune them because I wanted to know where they were <laughs> in case things took over. But uh, I think uh, I'll be okay to tidy them up now. So that part of the bed needs tidying up, but that won't take long. All these bricks and stuff needs uh, to be moved. That half was under all that uh, brambles and stuff that are cut. So uh, that can be now planted. 
So I'm going to be planting these uh, red currants and there's a black currant in here as well. And some raspberries will go along this edge. Now that I've decided what I'm going to do with this bed. So we've got one, two, three rows of raspberries with strawberries underneath. And then I'll do the same along here. I'm going to leave this bath and put blueberries in there. Two blueberries in there. There will be another blueberry in there and a black currant will go here. I've got this compost barrel here, but obviously once that's emptied, that can be moved. But the blueberry that will go in here is on the other plot and I'm leaving that because that's the one that I will take some uh, blueberries off this year and I will move them next year. Otherwise, if I plant all the blueberries, I'll uh, not have anything this year. These will be planted, but I'm not expecting much from them this year. The ones that are in that fruit bed are not move for now, but I think the birds will get most of those anyway. They did last year. I think I barely got a handful out of this bed. And I think these are all autumn fruiting ones, so I can uh, come in and cut these. Oh, I did cut the uh, ones for this one. Yes, these have all got buds on them. So uh, these are this year's. The uh, gooseberries are coming out, so uh, they're fine. I think these were all last year's summer fruiting ones, so I'll uh, prune these. I just left them in case the weeds took over and I was a bit uh, behind. Well, this one fruited last year. You can see it fruited last year and it's budding out this year, so I'll leave that one. And these two escapees, <laughs> they're in the path. And another one. I thought I'd dug all these up, but I missed some. And the early rhubarb is uh, doing fine. Now this one last year, it produced early and then it didn't do much after that. So uh, I think I might just get one or two small harvest off this one and see how it does. Right, the job for today is to sort out this uh, fruit bed, or at least try and get as much of it done today as possible. The three rows of raspberries and strawberries are okay, they need a bit of uh, weeding, but uh, they're fine. So that's that lot. Then I've got to move all these pots out of the way and sort this bath out. But I'm not going to use it this year. Next year I'm going to plant a couple of blueberries in it. Apart from where the pots are, it's absolutely riddled with um, buttercups and dandelions etc. So I have a bit of a tidy of that. I've got no shortage of uh, bits of carpet that uh, I'm picking up from all over the place. So what I'll do is I'll cover that up and hopefully that will kill off the worst of the weeds. Birds are going nuts. <laughs> anyway, apart from the crazy birds, I've got a bramble that's uh, rooting under that bath, so I'll have to get rid of that and that. Sort these pots out, dig out all the weeds from here, take the weeds out of that take some of the topsoil out so when I put the blueberry in I'll top it up with ericaceous compost and uh, that'll be fine. So I've got a bit of tidying up and clearing up to do before I can do some planting. And I've got uh, these currant bushes and things that need to actually be planted as soon as possible so uh, I'll have to sort these out. Uh, this apple tree is overdue for a prune some of it is okay. It'll do for this year, but things like this, that are going to be a problem next year because that will eventually get close to that. But they can uh, go this year and I'll cut those back next year. Well, this bit in the middle is really, really overcrowded. They're all sort of running into each other. So all of these need to be cut. Some of the branches, a few branches are all right. You can see they're starting to bud out. So I've uh, left it a bit late. But I knew it didn't need a lot of pruning because it was pruned last winter. But I don't know why this bit was left. So uh, I'll uh, come in and cut that bit. The rest of it is not too bad. I mean, there's things like this, which has grown and grown and grown. And now it's uh, grown into the top branches. So that's got to come out. So what I'm going to do is cut these out here. So that uh, it stops them going into the top. But hopefully I can get some lateral branches off these. Right, well I could have cut it down to the bottom there. But because uh, this, is, this area is nice and open, I've uh, cut that one, that one and that one. 
I'll let them grow and uh, get some side shoots like this one and then decide which one I like better because these two are very close together they're gonna rub so one of them will have to be cut back so I'll make a decision on that uh, later when I see how these grow and then I can make a decision but at least they're not rubbing into these branches anymore it's the 18th of March and uh, I've checked on the uh, fig cuttings and the, the soil is still sort of just sticks to my fingers just a little bit which is about right so it doesn't they don't need watering i've taken these three out from the corner and put them up here the others i'll just leave in that corner a little while just to see which one does better but uh yeah these uh, should be starting to leaf out if they've rooted there's still signs of life that little bit there that little bit there it focuses so it's just that little there. So uh, hopefully we'll get something out of these. Right, this bed is uh, cleared. I've got a bit of weeding to do around these, but uh, it was most important to get this area sorted. So all the brambles, all the weeds have gone. I pulled out tons of bindweed root. I mean, they were absolutely massive. You can see they're absolutely massive. And the grass roots and things, I mean, it's your typical grass root. And it just went all the way. So you, you dig here. <laughs> you end up pulling it out over there by the end of it so uh, this is done and uh, this was uh, a bit of uh, sticks and bramble roots that uh, I'd already pulled They're just little bits and pieces so they'll go in Tony's stove and get burnt a few bits of rubbish but uh, now I can get on and sort this area out and uh, plant uh, those uh, currant bushes quite clearly this branch you can see that gone up and it's going into the canopy so that's no good you've got one two three rubbing actually well they're rubbing against this piece which is obviously dead so this has got to come out and then i can probably leave one of these to fill this gap i think probably that one but uh yeah i'm not going to film the whole thing but uh yeah there's a little bit of pruning that needs to be done the branches out here are okay I'd love the bits that's crossing but I, I can wait till winter but it's it's all here in the middle that's a right mess so I need to sort that out and this early rhubarb is almost ready for a first harvest the uh, loganberry has got lots of buds on it so that's looking hopeful look at this one once uh, I can get this mess sorted out and I can get uh, a handle on the loganberry and the brambles in this corner I can manage them a bit better because last year the birds got them. <laughs> Whoever says slug pellets don't work obviously doesn't know what they're talking about because it's got the, those two, stop those in their tracks and uh, the trick of uh, putting a single pellet in each module seems to have done the trick. No, nothing's been nibbled otherwise these two buggers would have uh, been in here nibbling my cabbages. Bird riddens to them. <laughs> I've uh, pruned off some of these uh, branches but uh, I haven't gone too crazy just the worst offenders but uh, what I will do this winter is give it a proper prune but at the moment because there's all these twigs and branches it's a bit precarious walking around it and you know there's branches bits of metal and all sorts in here still so I've got to sort this out I didn't want to risk life and limb trying to prune this so uh, once this is cleared this year in the winter I can walk around and prune it properly but where there are multiple bits coming out of the same area I've got those so it's uh, a bit better then I think in the winter I will deal with the canopy but it's amazing that this time last year this was full of blossom and this year because we've had the cold winter nothing now that the bed's cleared, I've laid out the uh, red currants and the black currants where I want them to go. They will get quite big, but I'm not going to let them get to a massive size. So I will prune them to keep them to a reasonable size. This bath, which will eventually have blueberries in it, at the moment is a repository for all the carpet that I'm digging up, but uh, eventually that will go. So I need a bit of space around here so I can get to the blueberries from this side. Now this will be moved because what's in there is sort of half mulch, half, well, half rotten compost because I put it in last year. 
it's gone down by ooh, almost a third. That will be spread around these bushes. So there's four red currants and a black current there in the middle and there's another black current there obviously once this is moved that'll be fine there uh, i've cleared this barrel or half barrel and there'll be another blueberry bush going in there so that's this bed almost sorted this bed is going to be another fruit bed i moved that rhubarb the other day that rhubarb is staying for now this bath will be moved out of the way there's going to be goji berries here and here but I've got to move all this stuff out of the way and those berries aren't coming in till June anyway. I built this compost heap here last year just chucking clippings and uh, things over on to top of each other and look the daffodils come out. I don't know where it's come from because it must have been in, the, in, in amongst the clippings. I didn't put anything there. <laughs> so uh, nature's uh, giving me a little bonus. It's a fair size heap, so there's obviously more bulbs in there. If there's one, there might be more. But anyway, the one's come up. <laughs> it's going to be a bit tight, but it's not going to be a major thoroughfare. I'm just going to be squeezing by. And if the uh, currents get too big, I can always prune them a little bit. It's drizzling outside, so I'm not going to record me planting those bushes but uh, it's a straightforward dig a hole and the only thing I'm putting in is a bit of fish blood and bone and some of this uh, mycorrhizal fungi. People say dig a ten dollar hole on a one dollar tree by adding lots of compost and things but we don't do that anymore because on this heavy clay soil of ours the root just goes around in the compost and not uh, actually rooting into the um, soil. We don't add any compost to the soil so that it encourages the roots to go into the soil and look for nutrients. But just to give it a bit of a boost I'm adding some fish blood and bone and some mycorrhizal fungi. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward planting fruit bushes, but it's drizzling outside, so I'm not going to film that. Don't want to get the camera wet. Right, it's stopped drizzling for about a minute, so I'll we'll just show you what I've done. Just dig a hole, and the level of that is the same level as the soil. In currents, you can bury them a little bit deeper. It says just a few dried leaves on there. It's been sitting there for a while and it's gathered weeds. Now that I know that level is right, take it out. I'll just put in about half a scoop in there. And some fish and bone. Just break up that crop. Put that in. Now normally that is all I would put in. But in the shed, I found a bag of slow release fertilizer. Now, I'm not going to put that on my vegetables, so it'll either sit in the shed or it will have to be thrown away. So I thought, well, I'll just stick it under the fruit bushes, basically, just to get rid of it. Not a lot, just a couple of scoops. It is only a little scoop, you can see it's about half the size of my hand. So there's not a lot in there. Put it back on and... Right, so let's get this out. It should come out, there we go. So. Oops. So, I'm going to it that way because... This bit is dead and broken anyway, so it's going to go up and that way, so because that will grow that way, and these will grow up. And you just backfill around the hole. Now, even though it is raining, I will give that little drink of water. It's been standing outside and it has been raining so it doesn't need it for being thirsty but the water will help to fill in any air gaps around the root and so it's the same process for the rest.